Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be making a boulder trap. So there's a big rock behind this red wall here. And then when my player touches this black part here, it's going to trigger the boulder. So it's rolling down the ramp here. And if my player gets hit by the boulder, then he dies. Okay, and after that happens, it resets so that the next player can go up to it and try to escape. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at the ramp for the boulder. You don't have to do the wacky colors like I did. I just did the different colors so that you can see the different parts. The main part of this ramp is this green piece here, and that's just a wedge part. So if you go to part and then select wedge, that's what I used. The angle of the ramp here will determine how fast the rock goes. So if you want it to go faster, make this a steeper angle. And if you want it to go slower, then make it shallower. Okay, in the back here, we just have a regular part. And then on top of that part, we have another wedge piece that has a pretty shallow angle. And this is just to help the rock get going before it gets onto the green part. This red one is just a normal part, and we're just using that to keep the rock in place before we're ready to launch it. For the walls on the side, you can make little cutouts if you want to for the player to walk into. And finally, this black piece in the front is the trigger part. So this is what the player is going to step on to activate the trap. Okay, I would recommend putting all these different things inside of a model. So what I did is I got a model, I renamed it to Rock Trap, and then I put all the different parts of my ramp here inside the model. And you're probably going to want to anchor most of these parts so that they don't move around while the rock is rolling down it. Okay, after you design it and get everything inside of a model, go ahead and add a script into your model as well. The first thing we're going to do inside the script is make a variable for the model. So we'll say local trap is going to be equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to be making a variable for the trigger part. So in my case, that's going to be this black part in the front. And inside my model here, I have that renamed to trigger. So what I'm going to do for that is say local trigger. And this is going to be equal to trap dot trigger. After that, we're going to make a variable for the door. So that's this red part right here. And inside my model, I have that renamed to door. So we'll say local door. And this is going to be equal to trap dot door. After that, we're going to make one for the rock. So we'll say local rock, and that's going to be equal to trap dot rock. Okay, and the final part that we're going to be making a variable for is going to be the reset part. So this yellow wedge in the back here, I renamed to reset, and that's where I want to bring the rock to once the trap ends. Okay, so for that one, we're just going to say local and then reset part. And this is going to be equal to trap dot reset. Before we go on, just make sure that if you're going to use the same script as me, you have the same parts with the same names as well. If you're going to do something different, that's fine. Just make sure you update the variables here. We're going to create one final variable by saying local rolling, and we're going to set this equal to false. So this is how we're going to keep track if our trap is going or not. We're going to be creating a couple different functions. The first one that we're going to make is going to release the rock. So we're going to say local function. We're going to name this function release. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part. And then inside this function, like we do for a lot of cases, we're going to find the humanoid first. So we're going to say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part dot parent colon find first child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. Okay, we're going to say if humanoid and not rolling. So this means our trap is not activated yet. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set rolling equal to true, because now the trap is going. We're going to make the door transparent and also turn can collide off. So we'll say door dot transparency. And we're going to set this equal to one to make it invisible. We're also going to say door dot can collide. And we're going to set this equal to false. So this will make it so that the rock can roll through the wall. We're also going to unanchor the rock. So we're going to say rock dot anchored. And that's going to be equal to false. We're going to wait for some period of time, maybe like five seconds. And then after that five seconds, we're going to set rolling equal to false. Okay, and after a player activates this trap, we want to have some way to reset it. So we're going to do that in a separate function that we're going to make up here. So we're going to say local function. The name of this function is just going to be reset. 
the first thing we're going to do inside this function is say door dot transparency. And we're going to set that back equal to zero so it's visible again. And then we're also going to turn can collide back on. So we'll say door dot can collide. And we're going to set that equal to true. And then we want to reset the rock back onto our reset part, which is the yellow one here. To do that, we can say rock dot position. And we're going to set that equal to reset part dot position. However, if we leave it just like that, the rock is going to spawn inside of the reset part. So what we're going to do is add a small vector to this. So we're going to say plus and then vector three dot new. And then we want to adjust the height of it a little bit to bring it up. To do that, we can put zero for the X part. And then for the Y part, what we're going to do is say rock dot size and then dot y, so this will be the height of the rock. We're going to take half of the height, and that's what we're going to add onto the position. Okay, for the z part, we're also going to keep that zero. So the reason we're doing this extra vector here is because if we just do this right here, then when we reset the rock, half of it's going to be inside of the reset part. So by taking half of the rock size and adding it to the height, we're going to fix that issue. Okay, after that, what we want to do is say rock dot anchored. And we're going to set this equal to true so it doesn't move. And then we also want to reset the velocity or the speed of the rock back to zero. So we'll say rock dot velocity. And that's going to be equal to vector three dot new. And then we're just going to say zero comma zero comma zero. The last function is going to make it so that when the rock touches the player, it'll kill the player. Okay, for that function, we'll say local function. For the name of the function, we can say crush. This one is also going to take other part. Inside of this function, just like the release function, we're going to check for a humanoid. And then we'll say if humanoid. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to kill the player. So we'll say humanoid dot health. And we're going to set that equal to zero. And then we're going to wait for one second. And then after we wait for one second, we're going to reset the rock. So this is where making that function is going to be helpful. To reset the rock, all I have to do is say the name of the function with parentheses. There's also another spot that we want to reset the rock, and that's going to be right here. So after the five seconds, if it doesn't hit a player, we're going to reset it anyway. Okay, and finally down here at the bottom, we're going to connect our touch events with the functions. So the first one, we're going to say trigger dot touch. We're going to say colon connect, and we're going to connect this one to our release function. And for the other one, it's going to be rock dot touch. And this is going to be colon connect. And for this one, we're going to connect it to the crush function. All right, so let's go and run the code and check it out. Okay, so when the player touches this part here, the red wall goes away and the ball rolls down. After five seconds, it disappears and resets back behind the red wall. Okay, so there it is. And if I touch the part again, it's going to reactivate the trap and roll the ball down. So there's a couple parts of the script that I think you might need to adjust just depending on how you're going to use it in your game. The first one would be this part right here. The way I did it, it should work for most cases, but it may be something you have to take a look at if it's not spawning in the correct position. The other part that you may want to look at is the wait time right here. Let's say, for example, I tried it with two seconds. We can see what happens then. So now with a two second wait time, when the player activates the trap, it's not waiting long enough for it to get to the player. If you notice that it's going too long and it's rolling too far away, then you may want to shorten the time as well. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.